Triceratops is one of the most iconic dinosaurs that ever lived. Easily distinguishable by its three horns protruding from its face and a large bony neck frill behind the head, it roamed the Earth during the late Cretaceous period, 68 to 66 million years ago. It grew up to 9 meters or 30 feet long, stood 2.5 meters or 7.5 feet tall, and weighed up to 9 tons. To support the weight of the horns, their heads were enormous. The largest fossilized skull ever found measured around 2.5 meters or just over 8 feet long. They were considered slow lumbering beasts that browsed and foraged vegetation and lived up to 70 years old. Here we ask the question, could Triceratops survive nowadays? The world has changed a lot in the past 60 or 70 million years. The climate during the late Cretaceous period was very different from today, and most of the animals that walk the earth now didn't even exist back then. Triceratops was native to what is now North America. During the Cretaceous period, North America was split in half from the north to south by what is known as the Western Interior Seaway. This created two separate land masses, but the continent as a whole was moving northwest, towards its present-day position. The Rocky Mountains began to form, and near the end of the Cretaceous period, the Western Interior Seaway dried up and retreated. The two sides of North America were then joined by a coastal plain over what is now Montana. It was on this coastal plain that Triceratops was most common, but at the end of the Cretaceous, they, like 75% of all animal species, became extinct. Even though the world is now a very different place if Triceratops was reincarnated like the Jurassic Park dream, could they survive? Let's first look at the animal's diet and determine whether there would be food for it to eat in our modern world. We know that the Triceratops was a herbivore. It had a unique beak-like mouth, which is thought to have been used to grasp and pluck vegetation rather than bite it. Once the leafy matter was inside of the animal's mouth, it had a huge number of teeth to grind it down. Some report up to 800 teeth, which were arranged in columns. Their teeth were continuously replaced throughout their lifetime as they were worn and ground down from their fibrous diet. The dentition of the Triceratops and the shape and structure of its mouth suggest that it ate vast quantities of vegetation, which is hardly surprising given the size of it. Due to the low hung and heavy head, it is believed that they would have eaten low-lying fibrous matter. Although, like elephants, they could have knocked over trees with their incredible strength to get the juiciest leaves on higher branches. As well as feeding on leafy forage, research suggests that they likely ate woody palms and cycads, as well as ferns. These plants were common during the early Cretaceous, but by the end of the period, the flowering plants were dominating and there was a change to the ecosystem. Today, the types of vegetation that Triceratops fed on still exist. A lot of the plants died out along with the animals during the mass extinction event, but it wasn't quite as catastrophic for the plants. They are harder than animals, they can regenerate when damaged, and they can regrow from the tiniest root or seed. Some seeds can lay dormant in the soil for years until conditions are right for them to grow. For these reasons, some of the plant species that were around during the time of the dinosaurs are still around today, but conditions are now very different across North America than they were 66 million years ago. Today, Montana does not have the likes of palm trees and cycads, which prefer a more tropical and subtropical environment. During the Cretaceous, temperate rainforests stretched northwards to the Arctic Circle. They had to contend with the extended periods of darkness during the winter months, but there was little to no ice or snow at the poles during that time. Today, the more tropical conditions that Triceratops was familiar with are found along the Gulf Coast, the Lower Mississippi Valley, and South Atlantic states, and some parts of the Pacific Coast. The tropical regions include Hawaii and the Caribbean and Pacific territories. This leads us to talk about the climate Triceratops was used to. But in terms of food, we believe that enough tree species that were around 66 million years ago are around today and would be considered food for Triceratops, albeit in a more limited capacity. The Earth's climate was approximately 8 degrees Celsius warmer than it is nowadays. This was partly due to the shallower seas and partly the position of the continents, allowing for warm water to circulate and flow across the globe. Although some dinosaurs, like the mighty T. rex, were warm-blooded like modern birds, 
Many were cold-blooded like today's reptiles. One such cold-blooded dinosaur was the Triceratops. For cold-blooded animals, climate is everything. They obtain their heat from the sun and surrounding environment, and so this tends to affect their behavior. Triceratops may have migrated to warmer climes during the winter or spent time out in the open, basking in the sunshine like modern-day reptiles to maintain their core body temperature. In the northern hemisphere during the Cretaceous, summers were warm and winters were wet. The average temperature over summer would have been around 27 degrees Celsius, about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The winters would have dipped to around 15 degrees Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Summer temperatures could have exceeded 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit regularly. North America, although it can get hot in some of the southern states, does not have the climate it once did. We do not know how adaptable Triceratops was or would be if it was reintroduced to the modern world. Temperatures did fluctuate seasonally back then, and the cold-blooded dinosaurs probably migrated accordingly, but there may be too much of a difference for them to survive today. But the climate isn't just about temperature. The atmosphere was different during the Cretaceous period too. It is thought that there was four times as much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than at the start of the Industrial Revolution in the 1900s. This was a good thing for the plants and consequently for the plant-eating dinosaurs like Triceratops. Furthermore, the organisms alive during the Cretaceous were adapted to that environment. They found a way to survive. For example, they likely had much more efficient cardiovascular systems to cope with the lower oxygen levels and higher concentrations of carbon dioxide than is around today. Triceratops may struggle nowadays in a new atmospheric environment. But what about predators? Would they be too big to have to worry about being attacked by any of today's carnivores? North America certainly has its fair share of land predators, from mountain lions and coyotes to bears and wolves. During the Cretaceous period, Triceratops was alive at the same time as T. rex. It would likely have fallen prey to this enormous predatory carnivore and would have fought to the death if attacked. Fossil evidence has found T. rex tooth marks on the horns of a Triceratops, which then healed, showing that the Triceratops wasn't eaten on that occasion and must have fought back. But other fossils have shown large gouges on Triceratops' bones. These gouges match the teeth of the T. rex providing evidence that they were eaten by them. Smaller predators like Velociraptors were also around during the late Cretaceous. Although they have been depicted in films as hunting in packs, this doesn't seem to be the case. Therefore, they were likely too small to be able to hunt Triceratops on their own. But hunting in packs would be a technique that would be deployed by modern predators such as wolves if Triceratops was introduced to North America. By biting at the legs of animals until they grow tired and weak, wolves can take down much larger prey than themselves. However, during the Cretaceous period, most other dinosaurs gave Triceratops a wide berth. With their horns, which could grow as long as 1 meter or 3.3 feet, were lethal. The skeletal neck frill protects its massive body from a head-on attack, and its sheer size was intimidating. Not only that, but it is now believed that Triceratops moved in herds for at least some of the time. This would have made them even more difficult to hunt and would have provided them with greater protection. Although the Triceratops seems to have been a robust dinosaur, we don't believe it could survive today. So much has changed over the last 66 million years. They evolved and adapted to a completely different climate. The differences in climatic conditions would likely have consequences that we have not gone through, such as their rate of metabolism or the chemical composition of the plants they ate. There are places on Earth that would be warm enough for them, and there are places that would provide enough food. But the atmospheric conditions would have had too great an impact, as would the ecosystem surrounding them. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.